The breeze ascend like lofty walls, the foamy stream deep roaring falls, o'erhung with fragrant spreading shores, the burks of Aberfeldy. It was built in 1939, so just before it opened, just a couple of months before the Second World War started, and it shut in 1982. Once, uh, once it was shut, you know, clearly great loss to the community, um, and its absence is still felt. And it had always been sort of joked in the film society that you know, yeah, our, actually our long-term ambition was that, yeah, that we'd like to see cinema in Aberfeldy again. Wouldn't it be great if the Burke? So when we saw the for sale sign. We just sort of thought, well, you know, we'd kick ourselves if we didn't ask ourselves the question, if, if we could get the money together, if we could buy the cinema and do it up, would it run? To me, Charlotte is a spark plug behind the whole thing. You know, she was basically the one that got me interested in it, and uh, she is passionate about it, and uh, that passion kind of leaks off into others and makes them enthusiastic as well. Well, if we wanted cinema in Aberfeldy, um, you know, what different options were there? And, uh, you know, it didn't have to be in the old cinema. It could have been somewhere else. And actually, it'd be much cheaper to build a new purpose-built building. And at the end of the day, what <clears throat> I suppose what really swung it for the cinema was its, its position in the centre of the town and its history. I mean, the old couple that actually managed it, they were really, really quite funny. They were so straight-laced, you know, they didn't come to work without a tie on. You know, even when you're a projectionist, up when nobody sees you. The wife of the husband and wife team that ran it, Mrs Walker, she was quite a character. She took no nonsense, you know, she'd put you out as quick as look at you. Very, quite a small woman, wasn't she? Yeah, quick in her feet. Uh -huh. uh, he made Mrs Walker do all the running and telling off and... Oh. Kind of she could do that all right. <laughs> the great saying was, if it's pitting it you want, it's pitting it you'll get, and I'll tell your feather in you. <laughs> My husband was uh, an apprentice um, builder at that time, and, and he was that was his first job, was in the, building the cinema. We started very vague about this. I think it's probably four years ago. And we've had a lot of help, yes. And, and <laughs> we can do with an awful lot more. I think it's a sort of endless, bottomless pit, a black hole of, of what's required. Um, but we've had uh, fantastic help, um, lots, of, lots of support from all sorts of different people. Early on in the whole process, I was talking to somebody at uh, an evening function. He had very strong memories. He grew up here. And he came up to me at the end of the evening and gave me a pound and said, here's your first pound, <laughs> you know, get on with it. So from, from, from the first pound to people doing a whole raft of different things that people do, we've had a great deal of support. Anyway, well, we need to work. I think when the builders have gone out, we probably need to go into the building and yeah. think about yeah. what yeah. it is yeah. that we're going to need to make, to make the place functional. There's about five or six of us at the moment on the committee. We have to raise just over a million pounds, 1.1 million pounds for the renovation. We have uh, well, quite a few um, 
quite a few ideas. Um, I mean, the main, the majority of the money will come from grants and and trusts. We've bought the building and have paid for and have funds to pay for the initial clearing out of it, which is happening at the moment. We've raised. 450,000 to date, but we have quite a long way to go. I'm slightly concerned that we're holding events for people in the community and not maximising them because, we don't, because we're too stretched to follow them up, basically. Because, you know, you build up a certain momentum on the evening, like with the young mm -hmm, people, mm -hmm. and then because you don't have the resources mm -hmm. to follow that through, yeah, it dissipates again. Oh, and yeah. I think mm -hmm. we've let that go in a way. It, it does keep me awake um, a lot at night, and um, I'm worrying about... Well, you know, what what would happen if we can't raise the million? Um, and and we, we actually we, we sat down and thought about that. And so we've sort of set ourselves, uh, you know, a, a target, a time target. And if we if it really by April next year, it's unlikely that we're going to be raising this money. Then we're going to have to seriously rethink the plans for the building. I'm daunted by it, yes. I mean, it's a huge amount of money to be raised for a small community, and um, that is daunting. You just have to, you have to make that manageable, and I think setting ourselves this deadline for April next year has you know, sort of made us think, OK, well, we've got this in sight, we've thought about it, we know it's ambitious. So it's about being realistic. When I'm standing in the square and talking to somebody about the cinema and I look across at that building and I see it in my head as this, you know, fabulous functioning building and, and knowing that, you know, my daughter could just go to the cinema or, you know, her friends could just go to the cinema after school or something, I just think, God, it's so exciting. The summer blinks on flowery breeze and o'er the crystal streamlets plays. Come let us spend the late some days in the burks of Aberfeldy. <laughs>